Greeting shippers, we are here again. I could not resist, so we're back. Tonight, barbarian prince time. Probably Rex's voice. I hope you're excited. <laughs> it's the Friday night we all deserve. <laughs> I know, too many videos in too short a time frame, but this game was so cute. I just really wanted to. So I will pull it up. Just quickly. Let it load. If it feels like it. It's always something. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So, I also wanted to chat. Earlier today, I posted a video about going to cons and the con experience, which was super fun to film, and I'm so grateful that I got to film it. In case you missed it, we are also running a contest. So, head on over there if you want to learn how to enter that. And, yeah. So, I will skip ahead forward to our prince choices. All of them are fundamentally lovely. Hi, Jasmine. Tonight, we are doing Kuya. That's who we're doing tonight. Oh, also just about the contest. This is one of the ones that you could win. It's the full lippy set from Alternity. And this one's my favorite. I wear it all the time. It's Femme Fatale. But you don't care about that. You're here for Kuya, who almost did not happen because I was so drawn to Dad's Dash. I have a problem. Okay, I need to stop clicking outside of it. There we go. Perfect. Kuya, Beast Prince of the moon forest. I finished gathering my supplies and getting ready to go. By the time I arrive in the main hall of the tavern, Prince Kuya is already there. He's prompt. He's standing by the door, looking irritated and impatient, all cooped up and bristling to move. I've never met Prince Kuya, but I'm sure that must be him. How can I tell? Well, he's really, um, big. Oh, wow. <laughs> they weren't kidding. I mean, he's a prince of Moon Forest, so I knew he was going to be larger than average. I'm not that surprised. Don't say that for this chat. They can't handle that. But I guess it's one thing to hear about it. And another thing to see it, the larger than average is. <laughs> no, we can't start that thirsty that early. She's not even on the trip yet. The beast people of Moon Forest never leave their domain, and no one else is allowed inside. It's pretty rare to actually meet one, but everyone knows the stories. <laughs> Please, tell us the stories we don't know. I don't know the stories. <laughs> Huge. Wild. Terrifying. Faces of men, bones of giants, hearts of wolves. When that's all you hear about a kingdom, it sticks with you. The first word was huge. She is, um, not the Rose of Winter, the Thirst of Winter. <laughs> Prince Kuya lives up to that fearsome reputation. As I draw closer to him, my heart flutters in my chest. I don't usually get nervous, but see, I'm pretty big myself. Even when I was a little girl, I was taller and wider than most kids my age. And not to brag or anything, but I work out a lot. This guy, though, he actually makes me feel small. He turns his fierce gaze down on me, and my mind goes blank. I blurt out the first thing I think of. Aren't you gonna be cold? What? Y your armor... It's not giving you a lot of coverage, and Mount Needle can get chilly. Well, more than chilly, it's freezing. So I'm just worried you might be, um, that is. 
Excuse me. His deep, booming voice shakes the floor. Everyone in the tavern falls dead silent and looks at us. I know right away that I've messed up. I'm so, so sorry. I just blurted out whatever I was thinking, and I was looking at your chest. I mean, your armor, and I... Oh, never mind. Please, just let me start again. Um, hello, Prince Kuya. It's an honor to meet you. My name is Rosemary, and... Rosemary? Is that your first name? Is this your first time meeting a son of Moon Forest? Y yes, sir. To be honest, I hardly know a thing about you, or your people, or how to address you, or anything. I apologize if I've offended you sincerely. You know nothing. Truly. Nothing. Hmm. Very well then. I shall educate you. Rosemary, you speak to a great hunter prince. These clothes were bestowed upon me as proof of my great skill and an endless triumph. It makes me laugh to hear you question them. Haha, <laughs> see, I'm laughing. I'll be offended if I thought you were clever enough to intend your words as insults, but you are clearly just ignorant of civilized ways. I knew you outsiders were weak and tiny, but I had no idea the extent of your inferiority. For your information, we hunter princes brave much harsher conditions than this pitiful mountain. The cold is nothing to us. You outsiders need to be swaddled like infants when faced with a little snow. But I assure you, I am made of stronger stuff. These clothes are sufficient, and I'll not hear another word about them. His words sting, and it's hard to ignore the people staring at us. But the first thing I said to him, the very first thing, was an insult to his clothing, which is obviously special to him. I should have known better. As such, I really don't have the right to argue. I'll just have to grin and bear it for now. Y yes, Prince Kuya. And another thing, you do not call me by my name. Address me only as your mightiness, or, or don't speak to me at all. I, um, yes, your mightiness. He looks away and is silent for what feels like a long time. Have I really offended him so deeply? I can't believe it. Five minutes into this job, and I'm already blowing it. Some night I am. Sorry for yelling. Huh? Never mind, um. Come along, Rosemary. We have a long journey ahead of us. I'd hoped for a more formidable companion, but when in the land of lowly outsiders, even a prince must make do. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, you don't have to worry, I promise. I'm pretty strong. Maybe I'm not as tall as you, Prince Kuya, but... Whoops, I mean... <laughs> do not make me repeat myself. I told you to address me as your magnificence. What? No, he said something different last time. I guess he's right. Maybe I misheard him. No, no, girl. It's not going down like that. He said something different. I can save, though. I mean, there's no harm. Why not? Save over Tarun. <coughs> um, I heard something different. Your mightiness. Um, I'm pretty sure you said I should call you your mightiness. Oh, did I? I mean, don't question me. I mean, I'm not... Both are correct. Yes, that's it. Aren't you smart enough to figure that out? I'm not one to lose my temper, but this is annoying. It's not my fault he can't keep track of his own stupid title. I decide to keep that thought to myself, though. It's something in his expression. It isn't that I'm too scared to defy him. It's more like, will I hurt his feelings if I keep arguing? I think he's embarrassed that I called him out. It's kind of adorable, in an obnoxious way. 
Rosemary's down for anything and everything. Okay, that makes sense. I'll remember that, your mighty magnificence. Good. Thank you. So, Rosemary, you fancy yourself strong, do you? How amusing. I don't fancy myself anything. I just... Huh. You'll think differently once you see the strength of a true hunter prince in action. Now, let us be off. What is this guy's deal? It's not like I claim to be stronger than him or anything. I don't really care which of us is stronger. At least, not as much as he does. Oh, well, he's paying me to take him across the mountain. And like Mother always says, any job that pays is a good one. This job, though, I have a bad feeling about it. I hope I'm not in over my head. I love that she's concerned about this one, but for the dragon, she was just like, dragons! After an hour of walking, we've made good progress up the mountain. The sky is clouded over, though, and the snow is already falling fast. The weather might clear up as the day goes on, but it's more likely that things will only get worse from here. Also, I can't help but notice that Kuya is shivering in the cold. It's taking every ounce of my willpower not to comment. Do you think we should make camp early? I'm worried about the snow. Snow like this? Ha! It's nothing. Less than nothing. I am the great hunter Prince Kuya. Do you know, outsider, that I once destroyed an entire forest with nothing but my bare teeth and claws? That way, our enemy soldiers had no trees in which to hide. Such is the raw and brutal power we hunters possess. I don't see what that has to do with anything. But there's no point in asking. He's just going to keep on talking. That's why I'm going to Starlight City. I must represent Moon Forest in our yearly council with the outsider kings and queens. I have five older siblings, and usually my elder siblings represent our kingdom. But this year, I was chosen. They may be older than I am, but only I am a great hunter prince. I've actually heard stories about the great hunters of Moon Forest, although I don't remember any details. Hearing about them might be interesting, much as I hate to admit it. Not just anyone can become a hunter, you know. We are specific we are specially chosen to join the great hunt. Only the bravest and the strongest can handle it, like I, Kuya. My elder siblings weren't worthy, but I succeeded where they failed. The great hunts are sacred. Every year in the season of dusk, we ride through the forest for 13 nights. Hunters don't stop to sleep, eat, or even to rest. We focus on our quarry. We return only when we have subdued the rarest and most elusive prey, like the silver stag or the winged wolf, riding home with their pelts around our shoulders. We are treated like kings. No, better than kings. <laughs> With great feasts of golden apples and wine ever poured, we hunters are not only the guardians of Moon Forest, we are also its glory and its pride. Um, that sounds great, your magnificence. It is the highest honor, more wonderful and wild than your puny mind could imagine. Ha! Huh. I bet you wouldn't last an hour into the first evening of a great hunt. I'm surprised you were even made a knight. Although you might be considered strong by pitiful outsider standards. Actually, I'm not really a knight. I mean, like, not officially. No, Rosemary, now's not the time. <laughs> this is not the time. Ha! Huh. I should have guessed. Look at you, with your fluffy little mane. No claws, no fangs. Pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. First of all, uh, two. That was a sneeze, wasn't it? I knew it. I knew you were going to catch a cold in that outfit. What? No, that was a battle cry. Great hunters don't sneeze. We, uh, two. <sighs> Whatever you say, your magnificence. 
I grab my pack and pull out a small piece of bread wrapped in leaves. Here, eat this. It's magic cold medicine bread. It cures all colds. <laughs> Why? Is this some kind of trick? No, silly. It's a snack. If you eat more, your body will have more energy to keep itself warm. Rosemary, I, I know it's not much, but it might help. Though he still looks a bit suspicious, Kuya takes the bread from me and gives it a tiny nibble. I hate to admit it, but it's awfully cute. This is delicious. Good. Does it help you feel warmer? Well, it wasn't actually cold, remember? But maybe a little. <laughs> Glad to hear it. Why are you being so nice to me? I'm not sure you don't really deserve it. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's cold. That's ice cold. Not our Rosemary. Our Rosemary would never be ice cold like that. Because it's the right thing to do. The nightly thing to do. Why wouldn't I want to help you? It's kind of my job. And besides, that's what knights are supposed to do, right? Help people in need. <laughs> Patricia? You're like, no. <laughs> I wouldn't be very heroic otherwise. Well, of course. We great hunters are very heroic too, so... Thank you, Rosemary. This delicious tiny bread snack was worthy of a mighty warrior. Wow, that's not a compliment I ever expected to hear. But, you're very welcome. I have more tiny bread. <laughs> it's almost a nice moment. Unfortunately, it doesn't last. As soon as we start walking, he starts going on about his adventures again. It feels like he's been talking non-stop for hours. I know Mount Needle was bad, but I didn't think the journey would be this painful. And so, everyone thought I was done for. But really, I was only playing dead to fool the dire bear. At the very last moment, I roared back to life and sliced the bear's head off with just one of my claws. Everyone cheered and thanked me for saving the village. But really, I don't do it for thanks. I do it because it is my honor as a son of Moon Forest and a hunter prince. He grins at me, trying to gauge how much I enjoyed the story. I smile back at him, hoping it looks sincere. Now that I think about it, this might be a chance to connect with him. I have plenty of stories like that from my own travels. Maybe if we become better friends, he'll be more fun to talk to. You know, I came across a dire bear on my travels too. It sounds like mine wasn't as big as yours, but it was pretty hefty. It had been wandering around the edge of town, and it was scaring this one guy's goats, so he hired me to- Rosemary, please. Does this story have a point? I... I just thought you might want to hear about some of my stories, too. Do you really think your little errands can compare with the tales of a great prince of Moon Forest? Well, it's true that the goat story wasn't that exciting. It's a you-had-to-be-there thing. But I swear, if I have to hear the words great prince of Moon Forest one more time, I'm going to explode. No job is worth putting up with this. Okay. Calm down, Rosemary. Calm down. Let's... Let's just forget about it. Do you want to take a break soon? There's a river nearby so we can get some water and rest a bit before moving on. Huh. I could keep walking for hours. Easily. But if you're tired, I suppose I could... Oh, what's that? Huh? What's going on? Did you see a monster? I've got my sword. I'm ready to fight if- No, no, look. My cloak. It's got a huge stain on it. And look. One of my shoulder spikes got dented. When did that happen? We've only been walking a few hours. Huh? Jeez. From the way you screamed, I thought we were in danger. <laughs> 
Oh. Yup. <laughs> I did not scream. I bellowed a mighty roar of fury. Look at this mess. Um, I guess, but that tends to happen when you're hiking up a deadly mountain. Hasn't your cloak gotten ripped or stained on your hunts before? Well, obviously, yes, of course. But it's only gotten stained with the blood of deadly beasts. This is mud. Totally different thing. <laughs> Blood's better than mud. <laughs> what a poser. <laughs> you said there was a river nearby, yes? Let's stop here so I can wash it. Hurry. Whatever you say, your mightiness. In the cave. But I'm less excited about it this time. I don't know about this, Kuya. And so we stop for a rest. There's a small cave nearby that we duck into to get out of the snow. I get some food out of my pack ready to offer it to Kuya, but he's too busy worrying about his dumb cloak. Look at this. Practically ruined. And I paid so much for it, too. I thought you earned it from heroically slaying monsters and stuff like that. Yes, exactly. I paid for it with my, my heroic slayings. Oh, you outsider, you're so thick-headed. Do I have to explain everything to you? Hmm, I think this is salvageable. I'm gonna go to the river to see if I can clean it off. Stay right here. I don't touch anything. It's a cave. Why would I be touching stuff? Kui doesn't listen to me. He just goes storming off. Well, let him throw his tantrum, I guess. It's strange to see such a big, tough warrior guy get so upset over a little stain on his cloak and a scratch on his armor. Then again, I shouldn't be so quick to judge. I already upset him once by making light of what he was wearing. It's obviously really important to him. It's my own fault if I don't get it. It's not. No, it's not. No. Stop, Rosemary, it's not. He's, he's fronting. He's overcompensating and being a jerk. This is not your fault. I settle down, glad for a moment of silence and solitude. It's nice to catch my breath and not be yelled at for a little while. But a little while turns into a long while, and I start to get worried. Kuya's been gone for 20 minutes now. How long does it take to wash a stain out of a cloak, anyway? What if something happened to him? It was stupid of me to let him go out there alone. No matter how big he is, he's still a prince. And it's still my job to protect him. Maybe he got eaten by a bear. How would I explain that to the Moon Forest royal family? Sorry, I let your youngest son go out onto a deadly mountain by himself for no reason at all. I tell myself to calm down, and that Kuya's probably fine as I hurry out of the cave to look for him. It doesn't take me long to reach the riverside. No sign of Kuya, though. Oh no. What if something really did happen to him? Your Magnificence? Are you okay? Hello? I catch sight of Kuya's cloak and armor lying neatly folded on a smooth rock beside the river's edge. So if Kuya's clothes are here, where is he? Rosemary. Well... <laughs> <laughs> this is this is our Friday. I'm speechless. Yes, yes, I am. I knew Q was a big, muscular guy, but suddenly I'm seeing his actual body, and I'm overwhelmed. He's beautiful. I never thought I'd use that word to describe Kuya, but no other word would do him justice. I literally can't take my eyes off him. I want to memorize every detail so I can keep coming back to this image in my mind. <laughs> She's so thirsty always. She's like, I don't even like him, but damn. <laughs> After a moment though, the reality of the situation hits me all at once. Ah! Ah! Uh. What are you doing here? Why are you looking at me? I- what? It's not like I was trying to. You're the one who took your clothes off for no reason. Why did you do that? 
Isn't it obvious I washed them? Then I realized I was dirty too, so I took them off to bathe in the river. You wanted to bathe in a freezing river, completely naked, on a snow-covered mountain, by yourself. What's wrong with you? You'll get frostbite and die. Don't you have any common sense at all? I told you, I'm a great hunter prince, and I don't feel the cold. Oh, why do I bother trying to explain myself to a lowly peasant like you? I'll do what I please and... Uh... Kuya slips, and my heart stops beating. He's about to fall back into the freezing water completely naked. <laughs> if I don't act soon, he'll be swept away by the river, and then there won't be anything I can do to help him. Time stands still. I move without thinking, closing the distance between us as fast as I can. I throw my hands around his waist and pull him sharply away from the riverbank. The good news is, I managed to drag him safe to safety just in time. The bad news is, in doing so, I press him against me and get a face full of Kuya's naked chest. I stay like that for a moment, stunned. His body is so smooth and firm and surprisingly warm. I guess it's not really such bad news after all. Uh, Rosemary? Huh? What? You're touching my chest. A lot. Ah, so I am. Ha, goodness. What a situation. Let me just uh, go ahead and stop doing that. I step away very carefully. I kind of wish I didn't have to. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's um, no other way to say that line. Wait, I know the achievement. I hope you all saw what the achievement said. Wait, what am I thinking? This is Kuya, the biggest jerk in the world. But even jerks can have nice chests, right? <laughs> She's so thirsty. <laughs> well, I've never been more embarrassed in my life. Oh, Katisa, the achievement was quite a handful. <laughs> ha, um, yes, me too, but also thirsty. To be honest, I'm feeling a lot more than just embarrassed, but I'd rather die than let him know that. I avert my eyes, and he goes to put his clothes back on. There, see. I cleaned the stain out of the cloak and hammered the dent out of the spikes. After all that, I have no idea what to say. Um, I know this is an awkward situation, and I'd rather forget it completely. But, um, Rosemary, do you... Do you think it looks okay? What's that? I couldn't hear what you said. I said, um, do you think it looks okay? What? Your outfit? Well, yes, uh, I went through all the trouble to get it look nice again. Well, what do you think? I take a step back to get a look at him. I want to answer honestly. It'd be really satisfying to tell him he looks like an idiot, but the truth is, I'm a sucker for cool-looking armor, and I love the spikes and flowing cloak. I love all of the ridiculous 90s armor. I wonder if my armor would look good with a few spikes. But then, maybe I'm giving him too much credit because my brain is clouded by hotness. That's the thing, right? I don't want to encourage him to be a jerk, but I don't want to lie to him either. I don't know. I'm having a dilemma. <laughs> I have... I have conflicted feelings. About so many things. I have so many conflicted feelings right now. I... Uh, I feel like tit for tat. Like, you look cool, but not as cool as me. Cause, you know what? You know what? Just to get one for Rosemary. Ah. Uh. A lowly outsider, cooler than a great prince of moon forest. You certainly think highly of yourself. Hey now, one of us almost just froze to death naked, and one of us saved the other with her incredibly quick thinking and sweet moves. Should I remind you which is which? Only slip because you startled me. Yeah, well, I didn't slip, and I had a way bigger reason to be startled than you. I can't handle... 
All the innuendo. There's too much innuendo overload. I told you. I was trying to take a bath and... Oh, never mind. Thank you for saving me, Rosemary. Huh? Oh, I was only teasing. I'm just doing my job, after all. No, you were right. It was very, very cool of you. Oh, look at his eyes! Look at the, the inner soft boy eyes coming out, but it's not enough, Kuya. It's not enough. <laughs> not cooler than me, though. You think you can wink your way out of this? You can't. SG accepts no winking. Unless it's from Joseph. <laughs> we'll see about that. And so we gather our supplies and keep walking. I'm glad we're moving again, because it gives me something to think about besides Kuya without any clothes on. Oh, who am I kidding? I can't stop thinking about it. I don't even want to stop thinking about it. But I have to. It's Kuya. I don't care how hot he is. He's a big, mean, blowhard jerk. Okay, I care a little how hot he is. And if he's totally awful, why do I feel so conflicted about it? Why can't I just enjoy his hotness and move on? I guess it's because, in a few small moments, he's shown me something different. When he's vulnerable, he's kind of nice to me. Or at least, I get a glimpse of something more, underneath all that bluster. If he were like that more often, maybe. <sighs> There's no use in wishing for something that's never going to happen. No matter how nice it is to think about, I've got to forget Kuya's hot, hot body. <laughs> that was the sentence I just read. <laughs> Although, it's nice to distract myself with those memories while the real Kuya is ranting at me. Adrian, she can't. She's too far gone. It's all over. It's all over for Rosemary. <laughs> and anyway, you outsiders don't even have any horns. I thought they must just be really small and under your hair. But no. No horns at all. Do you have any idea how ridiculous you look? I almost feel sorry for you. How do you strike fear into the very souls of your enemies? Are you going to be like this the whole way? Why? Are you so intimidated by my greatness? What? No! Oh, you are so, so full of yourself. I can't believe I thought I saw something deeper in you. Even for like one tiny second. At least now I know for sure that looks aren't everything. Wait, what? You saw something in me? Whoa, I really don't want to get into this. Girl, you started it. <laughs> Before I can say anything, the wind picks up and starts to howl. The snow thickens into heavy sheets. I can hardly see anything in front of me. Demma, yes she is. There's no time to argue. I have to deal with this first. Thank goodness. Your mightiness, can you hear me? I know we've only been walking again for a little while, but we need to stop and find shelter for the night. Are you so easily defeated by a little wind and cold? It's still light out, and we just took a break. A sexy break. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're tired again already, I'll be happy to carry you the rest of the way. For goodness sake, can you stop? If we keep going in this weather, we'll both get lost or catch our death of cold. Trust me, I've crossed mountains before. The smartest thing to do is... I've crossed mountains too. Do you really think you know better than me? Don't make me laugh. Honestly, I've had just about enough of this guy. It takes a lot to push me over the edge, but I want to get this over with and get out of the stinging cold. Prince Kuya, shut up. It's like you can't even open your stupid mouth without saying something mean to me. And for what? All I'm doing is trying to help you. You're acting like a bratty child, and I'm sick of it. Look, you hired me to be your guide across this mountain, not some servant you can push around. But you still won't take any of my advice or listen to a word I say. Why did you even hire a guy at all if you're, you think you're so superior? You may not think so, but I actually know what I'm doing, okay? Probably more than you do. 
But if you're not going to listen to me, I should just leave you to die alone on this mountain. For real this time. There's a thick veil of snow around Kuya, blurring his features. He doesn't answer me at first, but comes closer to me, moving with strong and purposeful strides. I almost forgot how lar large he is. He towers over me easily. Now that he's closer, I can see his face more clearly. He looks angrier than I have ever seen him. The sight of it shocks me into silence. If I weren't trembling with anger myself, I'd wonder if I'd gone too far. When he finally speaks, his voice has a hard edge to it, a vicious growl that seems to shake the earth, even through the layers of snow. How dare you? How dare you? You speak to me as you would a child. I am not a child. You truly believe that I need you? You, a lowly outsider, weak and pathetic like an infant. What possible use could I have for you? If you knew what I was, you'd, you'd beg to serve me. I am the great Kuya who once tore the throat out of a wolf drake with my bare hands. I was only a baby. It was my first kill, the one that marked me for greatness for life. I laugh to think of what your first kill might have been, if you ever even had one. It was probably the time a mouse got into the kitchen when father was making breakfast, and I hit it with a frying pan. But now doesn't seem like a great time for that story. Kuya is shouting now. He's lost all sense of what's around him, his fangs and claws barred in fury. I face his rage head on, without flinching. Seeing him like this, with his wild mane whipping in the wind, his muscles rippling, those sharp teeth so huge and frightening. I've been thinking of Kuya as a big blowhard, but it occurs to me for the first time that these stories of his might actually be true. He really does look like a barbarian prince, one who could rip the throat of a wolf drake or level a forest with his bare claws. So, so, are you so pitiful that you have nothing to say in response? Well, that's to be expected, isn't it? A pathetic outsider with nothing to do or say. Why did you even bring me along if you hate me so much? Hate you? I... but... I don't... In the next instant our argument comes to an end, we both realize there's a bigger problem in front of us. Uh-oh. That's serious business. I'm blocking her face. No! Shrink, shrink, shrink. You don't need to see me. You need to see her angry face. A great and terrifying beast emerges from the swirling snow, a tremendous boar, covered with dense black hair, as sharp and thick as nails, with a set of cruel tusks as long as my arm. A mount needle razorback. I remember reading about them in one of my old books. My blood turns cold at the sight of it. These beasts don't normally attack humans unprovoked, but loud sounds can trigger them into a rampage. This one must have heard Kuya and I when we were shouting at each other. The Razorback saunters toward us, its tusks lowered in an attack position. I grab Kuya's arm and speak in a low whisper. Your Mightiness, I've read about these things, and they're very dangerous. Even if we both try to fight it, we might not make it out alive. If we back away slowly, we can escape and find shelter without provoking it to charge. Rosemary, do not insult me. I am a hunter prince. I can ha handle this foul beast myself. Kuya's voice shakes violently, with fear or with cold. I can't tell. All I know is we'd be idiots to fight this thing, and the longer we go without running, the less chance we have of escaping. I remember reading something about having one very odd, surprising weakness. But it was just a footnote in a book. I can't for the life of me think of it now. Please, if you've ever listened to me, listen to me now. This isn't about how strong you are. That thing has hide that thing has a hide like steel, and its tusks could rip through you in less than a second. Even the strongest person in the world couldn't fight it. Look, let me handle this. I, I know I can do it. Please trust me. It's not crazy to think that Kuya might be a match for that thing. But I can't shake the feeling that he's in over his head. 
I don't know what to do, but it's too late anyway. The Razorback lurches forward to charge right at us. I'll have to make a decision now, or we'll both be dead. <clears throat> I'd like to save before a decision. <laughs> I d <laughs> don't don't make me make this choice. If I leap in front of him, I'll be hurt. But he doesn't know what he's doing because he's an idiot. <laughs> if we let him fight it, he's just <sighs> protect. <laughs> she protect. She attack. <laughs> Oh, I'm a knight. 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 I don't care how strong... <laughs> Lydia. <laughs> I don't care how strong Prince Kuya is. He hired me to protect him. And that's what I'm going to do. I leap in front and swing my sword out in a wild arc. My sword scratches the Razorback's nose. It squeals angrily and veers off. But only for a moment. Well, you hit it. You actually hit it. Just a tiny scratch. I think it was more surprised than hurt. Don't celebrate yet. The Razorback changes course and comes thundering at us angrier than ever. I don't think a simple scratch will stop it this time. I really wish I could remember that secret weak spot, but I can't, so I'll have to improvise. Hold on tight. What? I'm not sure if I can do this, but I have to try. As quick as I can, I sheath my sword and take Kuya into my arms. He's heavy, but I can manage it. I hold on to him as tightly as I can and leap into the air an instant before the Razorback hits us. Against all odds, I jump clear over the beast. I know I shouldn't care about this stuff right now, but part of me wonders if I look cool. We land safely in the snow, while the Razorback searches furiously for where we disappeared to. Rosemary, that was incredible. We're not out of the woods yet. It just spotted us. The Razorback comes charging again. I leap deftly aside, just barely out of reach of those tusks. The beast keeps coming, and I keep darting away. My body moves on instinct. I think of nothing but keeping Kuya safe. The Razorback and I are caught in a strange little dance. It hasn't hit me yet, but I don't have an escape plan either. I know I can't keep this up for much longer. With every leap, I get a little more tired, and Kuya feels a little heavier in my arms. I have to end this quickly, or the Razorback will end it for me. When it charges again, this time I don't leap aside right away. I stand my ground until the Razorback is almost on top of me. Kuya's arms tighten around my shoulders. I can tell he's scared, but I know what I'm doing. I need to be as close as possible if I'm going to hit my target. Just before collision, I step aside only slightly so that the great boar comes charging past me. It's so close, I can feel the brush of its hair against my skin. Without wasting a breath, I jab my sword into its face, hoping against hope that I hit the right spot. I hear a great squeal of pain. I leap away, putting as much distance between us and that beast as possible. What'd you do? Did you hit it? There's blood on my sword. So yeah, I guess I did. What good will that do? A little scratch won't kill it. Dummy, I'm not trying to kill it. I hit it square in the eye. It's half blind. Sure enough, the Razorback is squealing angrily, rubbing its bleeding eye in the snow. For the moment, it seems to have forgotten us. Oh, that makes sense, but but to have hit such a small spot on a moving target, that's impossible. I can't believe you pulled it off. Uh, it just takes practice. The Razorback squeals again. What a horrible noise. It seems to have caught sight of us with its one good eye. It must be angrier than ever. Time to go. I rush off, holding tight to Kuya. Behind me, I can hear the thundering hoofbeats of the Razorback, but it's losing blood now, and can't keep track of us so easily. Eventually, the sound dies down, fading into nothing. We lost it. We're safe. I'm not sure how long I've been running, 
When we break out into a small silent clearing, I finally feel like we can stop. Carefully, I set Kuya down and double over to cast my breath. Rosemary, that was so cool. <laughs> what? Cool? Really? Thank you for saving me. I'm sorry I didn't do much. I... I told you, you couldn't have done much more than I did, and it's my job to watch your back. Besides, we only barely escaped, and we'll have to be careful not to run into that thing again. An angry, half-blind Razorback with a grudge is bad news. But you're very welcome, your magnificence. Oh, it's safe for me to expand myself again slightly. Yay! Fist of the Beast King? <laughs> oh. We decide to make camp in a cave nearby, since we're both pretty wiped out. Him from standing there and being frightened. It's exhausting. <laughs> For once in his life, Kuya is pretty quiet. He seems eager to help set up, too. It's weird, but not unwelcome. I settle down for dinner by the fire. I have some hard bread and jerky in my pack. Kuya doesn't have anything. He must be hungry. Um, your magnificence? You can have some of my food if you want. The great hunters of Moonforest say that the only proper way to feast is to kill the strongest animal you can find and devour its flesh right then and there. If the blood is still hot, it joins with yours and you can feel the very heat. Oh, you can feel very hard of the beast pound in your veins. I'm pretty sure that's not how eating works. But if those are his ways, who am I to argue? I shrug and settle down to eat. I can't help but notice Kuya staring at my meal, though. I can even hear his stomach grumble. Although, I suppose you outsiders consider it rude to refuse to share meals. That's why you're looking at me like that, isn't it? I'm... Not looking at you? If you insist, I suppose I could break tradition just this once. He grabs a piece of hard bread from my pack and devours it. <laughs> he could have just said he wanted to share. Whatever you say, your mightiness. You know, Rosemary, I've been thinking. I don't think you should have to call me by those titles anymore. I mean, it's silly, isn't it? Oh, really? Why the sudden change of heart? It's not a change of heart, it's just... In Moonforest, when two hunters slay a beast together, they become brothers. That's um, the rule. It's not proper for one brother to consider himself superior to another. And since we slayed a beast together, you are my brother now, a sister. Anyway, we're equals. I think your definition of slaying a beast must be pretty liberal. But okay, that works for me. Shall I call you Prince Kuya now? No, just Kuya, I mean, if you don't mind. Okay, Kuya. He finishes his bread in silence, hardly even looking at me. It's not like he's ignoring me, though. More like he's suddenly shy. But why would he be so timid all of a sudden? I just can't figure this guy out. Rosemary, um, do you remember you were telling me about how you had to fight a dire bear once? I'd, I'd like to hear the rest of that story if you don't mind. Huh? Really? I mean, I guess I could, but... Why would you want to know that? You were right. It's not a very interesting story. I never even fought the dire bear. Please, tell me anyway. Mm, okay. Let's see. There was this dire bear, um, but you know that already. Anyway, it was hanging around the edge of a small village and scaring this one guy's herd of goats. But because it hadn't actually done anything, we thought it was a shame to kill it. So instead, the goat herd's wife made me this hat that made me look like I had a goat's horns. It was pretty silly. I went into the woods and started making these goat noises, you know, bleeding, and the dire bear followed the sound into the woods. I managed to lead it far enough away that it never bothered the goats again. But the goat herd and his wife thought it was hilarious. They laughed and laughed at me, calling me stuff like Lady Bleats a lot. 
But they gave me plenty of cheese to take with me when I left, so I guess they were alright. When I finish the story, I cringe a little. Definitely a you-had-to-be-there thing. But to my surprise... <sighs> that is absolutely, without a doubt, the funniest story I've ever heard, bro. <laughs> Rosemary, you're incredible. A great fighter and a marvelous storyteller. Is there anything you can't do, bro? <laughs> Laying it on a little thick there, isn't he? I'm starting to get freaked out. Why is this guy's angle? I'll have to keep my wits about me in case he tries anything. Um, I didn't think it was that funny. But thank you, I guess. Oh my god, Shizuko, I love it. Kuya finally stops laughing after a few minutes and wipes tears out of... And wipes tears out of his eyes. And he just stares at me with his big puppy dog eyes for what feels like way too long. You know, your hair is very pretty in the firelight. Look out, Rosemary. He's trying stuff. He's trying something. He's making his move. Okay. Time to change the subject. Uh, thanks. So, um, what about you? What about me? Well, you've told me plenty of stories already about, like, killing monsters and great hunts and destroying enemy armies and stuff like... But that can't be all you do, right? I mean, what's your day-to-day -day life like? Tell me about Moon Forest. It's pretty much a mystery to me. Oh, that, well... To my surprise, he seems reluctant to talk about it. Moon Forest is small. Smaller than most kingdoms, I'm told. All the families are familiar with each other, even the royal family, for better or worse. It's thick with trees, and in constant twilight, even in the daytime. No one knows why. It might be some ancient magic baked deep into the land. So it's always dark outside? Forever? I don't know, it sounds kinda nice. But he doesn't seem to be all that into it. I don't know. I think it sounds like it could be beautiful. God. <laughs> oh, so girly. Like, ooh, it's nighttime all the time. <laughs> oh my gosh, Kuya. I love that it's nighttime in your village. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why this is such a decision for me. I'm going to save. Hello, darkness. Um. I don't know. I really don't know. I'm just sitting here like, this is the greatest life choice of all time. I don't know. Beautiful? Yes. Achievement. <laughs> it is very beautiful. I'm glad you think so. Well, thinking about it matters. <laughs> Oh? Why is that? Uh, nothing. Never mind. His voice, wistful and lonely, drifts off with those words. I wait for him to continue, but he doesn't. For a moment, there's only the sound of the crackling fire. Why in the world is he acting this way? It really isn't like him. Mm, it sounds like you love it there. Parts of it are nice, yes. The trees are much larger in Moon Forest. They're purple and reach farther into the sky than you can see, fading into mist. The shadows seem to fold around them like blankets. And there's the silver grass that comes up to your knees, soft as feathers and always full of fireflies. Those are the parts I like. Aw, are you maybe a little homesick? What? Absolutely not. I'm not a child, you know. It's not childish to miss your home. I think about the farm a lot. I mean, I'm happy to be out here doing what I'm doing, but it's natural to miss the place you grew up in, right? I guess so, but I don't always miss the people. My siblings, they, they're all older than me, and I'm an adult, but I'll always be a little brother to them. Well, that's hard to believe. Nothing about you is little. <laughs> Rosemary, 
calm it down. Just calm down. I think you're the scariest looking guy I've ever met. Uh, in a good way, of course. You really mean that? Ha! <laughs> totally. And you're a legendary hunter prince, anyway. If you start to get down yourself, just remember all your awesomely heroic feats and stuff. Right. My heroic feats. Rosemary, can I ask you something? Something personal? His voice is low. Barely audible. I've never heard him talk like this before. I'm um, sure, Kuya. Anything, I guess. Do you... Have a boyfriend. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I, what? Where did that come from? Nothing. Never mind. Forget it. I didn't say anything. Huh? Kuya, wait. I didn't... You just caught me off guard is all. No, shut up. That's enough. We're not talking about this. Kuya? Are you crying a little? A great hunter prince of Moonforce does not cry. How dare you even ask me that? Who do you think you are? I'm pretty sure I saw tears in his eyes, though. You're... You're just a lowly outsider. You know nothing. Nothing at all. Calm down. I didn't mean to... Enough. Go sleep. Th that's in order. We've got a long day ahead of us tomorrow, and I won't have you keep me awake with any more nonsense. Good night. And with that, Kuya flops down dramatically and pulls his blanket up over his head. Within seconds, he's snoring way too loud for it to be real. To be honest, I have no idea what to think. He's obviously not going to say anything more tonight. I lie down, but I'm too surprised and bewildered to fall asleep right away. I stare at Kuya as he sleeps beside me, wondering what exactly is going on in his head. If he'd just let me answer him, I'd have told him I don't have a boyfriend. I guess that means he doesn't have anyone either. In spite of myself, I can't help but think of how good he looked today. <laughs> there is so... Whew, so thirsty. <laughs> I'm gonna have a drink for Rosemary. I'd be crazy to think about Kuya that way, right? Even if he wasn't so annoying, he'd still be from a totally different world. Then again, when I saw how hot he was, I wish he'd be nicer to me too. After we fought the Razorback, he was nicer. For a little while. Isn't that exactly what I've been hoping for? <laughs> uh, I think we should, we should just call it the Cave of Thirst. Not the Cave of Wonders, the Cave of Thirst. I do eventually drift off to sleep. And when I wake the next morning, I feel strangely cheerful. Maybe now that we both had time to sleep on it, he's calmed down. I roll over to ask him if he was really serious about the boyfriend thing. <laughs> but his blanket lies flat on the hard earth. Kuya is gone. Maybe he got up to get breakfast or tried to do something stupid like take an ice bath again. But right away, it feels wrong to me. I stand up, suddenly wide awake, and grab my sword. Outside of camp, there are signs of a struggle, and my heart grows cold. Claw marks on the trees, scuffled footprints in the snow. It looks like Kuya was dragged away. But Kuya is a huge and powerful hunter prince, right? What could possibly be strong enough to have done this to him? I know it doesn't make much sense, but my first thought is of the Razorback. But that can't be. How could a giant half-blind boar have found us and dragged Kuya away, all without waking me up? What else could it have been, though? Is there some monster on this mountain that we don't even know about? Something powerful and crafty that neither of us could have seen coming. It doesn't matter now. No matter what horrible creature did this, my job is still the same. I've got to save Kuya. I head out, not bothering to pack up our camp. Luckily, the monster and Kuya have left a pretty clear trail, and in the fresh morning light, it isn't hard to keep track. I follow the gashes in the trees, and the signs of struggle. I do my best to stay positive despite the sinking feeling in my stomach. 
It's good that there's a trail at all, right? And no blood so far. I keep walking for about an hour without finding anything. I'm getting really worried. Until suddenly far ahead, I see a very familiar figure shrouded in morning mist. Broad shoulders, horns, flowing hair. <laughs> He's in danger. <laughs> Now's not the time. It's Kuya. It has to be. My heart leaps. I run as fast as I can towards the figure. I'd give anything to hear Kuya's voice again, his wonderful Batman voice, even if he was just calling me inferior again. But as I draw closer, I realize it's not Kuya. Now I'm more confused than ever. This person is still a moon forester for sure, but who is this? What's going on? Oh, hello there. You must be Rosemary, yes. You... You're not Kuya. No, and thank goodness for that. You are Kuya's babysitter, are you not? I'm Princess Karo. I'm terribly sorry for my little brother's appalling behavior. Little brother? That's right. Kuya has five older siblings, doesn't he? I'm sorry, Princess Karo. I'm not a babysitter. I'm a knight, sort of. I'm here to help guide Kuya to Starlight City, but he's gone missing. Oh, I know all about what little Kuya's been up to. Shameful, isn't it? At least you're calling him by his actual name. He didn't make you refer to him as his awesome lordship of holy greatness or anything ridiculous like that, did he? Are we going to out him to his sister? Is that is that the kind of... um? Are we that kind of people? <laughs> so, um... Are we going to tell her? Are we tattling? <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> no, I don't I don't need to overwrite it. I have more slots. Let's not let's not out him. I call it. <laughs> oh, that's a relief. He is the youngest, but really my patience only extends so far. He's an adult. It's really about time he stopped these childish games. Games? Um, what exactly do you mean? Oh, you know, play acting, posturing. I'm sure you've had quite enough of it, having spent just one day with him. And you know, it gets all the worse when he's trying to impress a pretty lady. As if any decent woman would be halfway fooled, much less seduced, by that childish twaddle. It's like a peacock strutting around, sticking his tail feathers in the face of a hen. Ridiculous for civilized folk. I don't really understand what's going on, but I feel really embarrassed anyway. Uh, yeah, <laughs> who could possibly fall for that? Where is Kuya? Is he okay? Oh, he's fine. As soon as I found out he had left for Mount Needle, I went off to bring him back. He's really not suited to a place like this. Did you say he wanted you to take him to Starlight City? For the council? Well, that makes sense. He's always been jealous that I get to serve as Moonforce representative. And not him. But there's a reason he's never chosen for that task. He just isn't ready for the responsibility. And really, this little escapade proves that. Did he honestly believe the council would accept him as an ambassador of Moon Forest? Simply because he was the first one to get there? What a ridiculous notion. Really, he might have died if you weren't here to protect him. I must thank you for keeping our dear little Kuya safe. Wait, so is Kuya really a great hunter or... Great hunter? <laughs> oh, that's amazing. You poor thing. He told you nothing of the truth, did he? Let me bring you up to speed. Where even to start? It must be obvious that our dear Kuya has some real delusions of grandeur. The great hunt and its sacred hunters 
all that is part of a legend passed down among Moon Foresters for generations. It's a story for children. An exciting story, certainly, but that's all it is. The Great Hunters may have been based on real historical figures, but even so, such barbaric animal slaughter, with no regard for the balance of nature, has long been a thing of the past. We Moon Foresters have moved far beyond that now. I suppose it's our own fault, being so secretive with our ways, that outsiders don't know how we really are. I don't at all blame you for believing Kuya's tall tales of mystical ruffians. But we're a pacifist kingdom now. Our laws focus on coexistence with the forest that is ethical, that is ethical, that is ethical as well as spiritual, with a mind for conservation. We chose to stay isolated in order to keep the forest a closed and balanced system with no outside influences to muck things up. We've managed to bring several native moon forest species back from the brink of extinction, you know. I just stand there, letting the flood of words wash over me. I'd like to say none of it makes sense, but sadly, it makes more sense than anything Kuya's told me. Carl seems to notice that I'm staring at her blankly, and flashes me an apologetic smile. Oh, I do hope I haven't been prattling on. I get so excited when I think about Moonforest's achievements. I wish outsiders knew more about us. Maybe I'll bring it up at the council this year. All in all, you should know that Kuya's behavior does not represent us. He's probably told you all kinds of stories of his violent deeds. Um, he said... He said he tore the throat out of a wolf drake for his first kill when he was a baby, and that he once leveled an entire forest of trees with his bare claws. First kill? Preposterous! We haven't celebrated such things in Moon Forest for hundreds of years. And the bit about leveling trees? <sighs> That's from the tale of Moonbeam, a children's fable. Not being a moon forester, you wouldn't have heard it, but most of us grow up with it. Kuya was always especially enthralled with childish tales of heroism. It's rather sad, actually. He's mauled himself after these fictional heroes because he wants to feel big and powerful, I suppose. He was always the runt of the family and was never given much to do around the palace. It isn't that I don't sympathize, mind you, but enough is enough. Wouldn't you agree? I can't believe he was wearing that ridiculous warrior getup out here in a freezing mountain. It's bad enough when he wears it to family dinners, but at least there it's only embarrassing. Here, he's likely to catch a cold. How do you- how do I know you're telling the truth? It really looked like someone kidnapped him. Maybe you're just telling me all this so I stop trying to find him. Where is he now, anyway? My dear, Kuya did not want to leave your side, but I really didn't want to humor him any longer. He fought me tooth and claw, but I was determined to release you from his burden. Of course, he isn't strong enough to stand a chance against me, so his struggling was rather pointless. If it isn't painfully clear by now, little Kuya couldn't slay a fly. Eventually, I did have to bind his wrists because he kept clawing at the poor trees, trying to get away. Do you know how bad that is for the environment? He did manage to slip away and run off into the woods a moment ago, but I can't imagine he's gotten far. I was just about to go looking for him, but then I ran into you. She doesn't seem worried at all that Kui is lost on the mountain again. The only thing Karo seems to have in common with her brother is that they're both super condescending. Well, I'm gonna go find him. You stay here and wait. I don't need your help to bring him back safely. I don't care if you think he's ridiculous. He's my friend, and I care about him. I want to be the one to make sure he's okay. That's fine with me. I'm quite exhausted from hauling him around all morning, and I wouldn't mind letting you take over for now. But tell me, now you know the truth about him, are you really all that surprised? It's adorable that you care about him, but... Did you ever truly believe he was the great hunter he said he was? I only asked this ass for my curiosity, mind you. I know you're an outsider, but surely you weren't silly enough to be fooled?
There's no reason to treat him like that. Yes, I never doubted Kuya, not even for a second. Well, I mean, we in the chat doubted Kuya. I don't know if Rosemary died. I'm just like, she's so mean. <laughs> There's really no reason to treat him like that, though. I kind of am leaning towards that, like... Hey, there's no, like... I'm saving before I do, but hey! I'm not saying Kuyu was never immature, but... You shouldn't write him off so quickly. It seems to me that he acts that way because you all made him feel like he has to. Like that's the only way you'd ever think he was worth anything. Kuya's not just a runt. He's brave and imaginative and sweet and hot in his own strange way. Did I mention that he's hot? If you'd just give him a little attention, you'd see that. Hey now, that's uncalled for. You know nothing of what it's like in our family home. For all you know, we lavish attention and love on Kuya and he still acts like a brat. Maybe that's true. But you can't deny that Kuya acts that way because he just wants someone to believe in him for once. I don't care if Kuya is a great hunter or not. I believe in him anyway. It's only when I say this out loud that I realize... I really do believe in Kuya, in spite of it all. I turn away and stride into the forest without giving Karo a chance to respond. It's up to me to find Kuya and bring him back safe. It doesn't take long to find him. It's not snowing, so his footsteps are left uncovered. There, leaning against a boulder with his wrists bound and his head bowed, is Kuya. I approach him carefully and place a hand gently on his shoulder and say, Hey. <laughs> I expect him to be angry, to give me some lecture about how it's improper for a lowly outsider to lay a hand on a hunter prince. Instead, he looks up at me with tears in his eyes. He doesn't bother to try to hide them now. I guess you talked to my sister, huh? She told you everything? Yeah, she did. Is it all true? It is. All of it. I... I'm so sorry I lied to you. I just... I wanted you to think I was somebody. I want everyone to think that, even though I'm not. I'm just the runt of the family that no one wanted. I read those old stories about Moonforest in the olden days, and I thought there would be nothing better than being a great hunter like that. But if I went on a hunt, I'd probably get killed on the first night. Good thing it's not real then, huh? <sighs> yeah. I guess I thought that maybe coming out here would make me stronger. I might even slay a beast and win the respect of my people. Just like the hunters of the old days. Or at least I'd sneak off to Starlight City for the council. Even though they'd never let me attend, maybe I could prove to them I'm ready for it. But then I met you. I realized you are brave and strong and I'm nothing like you. But because I'm bigger than you, you couldn't tell how weak I really am. You actually thought I was a tough guy. No one's ever thought I was anything but a runt, no matter how much I tried to pretend. Got so carried away. Kuya. Can you believe it? I actually met a real hero. Someone worthy of being a great hunter. And I acted like a mean-spirited, arrogant fool and ruined it. I'm no better than my stupid brothers and sisters. Can you ever forgive me? Oh, stop melting my big, softy heart. Of course, Kuya, I've forgiven you already, is my heart. But in reality, it should be maybe, but you have to do better. But, ah, uh, I know that I should say one. I know. I know, chat. I know. I know. I know! My heart... <laughs> you should be better... Oh, do better, Kuya. Be better... <laughs> you really shouldn't have been so mean to me, you know. I mean, haven't you had enough of your brothers and sisters treating you badly? 
You should know how it feels when someone's a jerk to you. Just to make themselves feel big. And you shouldn't have lied to me either. Clear doesn't argue. He just hangs his head. I can tell he knows what I'm saying is right. I know. I'm sorry. I'm such a fool. I wanted to impress you this whole time. Ever since I saw you fight that Razorback, I've been head over heels for you. Really? And that's why you were acting so different last night? Yes, but I messed everything up like I always do. Hold on. You haven't messed everything up. You can still make it up to me. Oh, I can? Of course. You just have to do better next time. I know you can do it. I believe in you. And hey, I'll give you pointers if you mess up, since I'm so awesome and all. You will? Does that mean we could keep hanging out? <laughs> hanging out? Is that what we've been doing? But yes, I'd like that. Kuya looks at me with that big, cute, puppy-like smile of his. I just can't help it anymore. I lean in and kiss him. So thirsty. Oh my goodness. His hands are bound. This is the first time I've ever kissed anyone. I'm glad it's with him. With the snow swirling around us, he is an oasis of warmth. Kuya leans into me. He has no choice because his arms are tied. And I put my arms around him, drawing him close. Please don't, don't take me back to Karu yet. I want to stay like this for as long as possible. Let's stay here forever then. I feel the hard muscles on his chest and arms, rubbing them gently with my bare hands. It's embarrassing to admit, but I'm so glad I finally get to do this. Moon Foresters must all be huge, if a guy as beefy as this could be considered weak. I don't care about that, though. Kuya is perfect to me. I feel the scrape of his sharp teeth on my lips. He's being really gentle. There's something intoxicating about being so close to those huge fangs. Knowing they would never hurt me. See, she's just got this this kink across across all the princes. <laughs> the great hunter, so strong and fierce. Well, close enough. I reach up to touch his hair, and my hand brushes against one of his horns. He moans softly. I guess that must be a sensitive spot. Kuya, it feels silly to say this out loud, but do you remember when I accidentally touched your chest? Of course I do. It's hard for me to forget. <laughs> me too. Well, I was thinking. Since I got to touch yours, it's only fair that you get to touch mine. <laughs> I mean, if you want to. I'd love to, but I can't. Oh, <laughs> is it a moon force to rule or something? No, it's because my wrists are tied up. Oh gosh, I'm so sorry. I almost completely forgot. It's okay, I am. I like it. <laughs> it's just... Everything's happening. This game's so fanficky. <laughs> Goodness. Should I leave them tied then? Unfortunately, our time together gets cut short by an unwelcome appearance stomping through the trees to find us. Oh no! What is it? Is it Karo? Worse. The Razorback with its bloody eye and deadly tusks has found us again. I take out my dagger and slice up Nkuya's bindings. It would have been fun to leave them on, but that time has passed. I slide my greatsword out of its sheath. There aren't a lot of visible escape routes, but maybe I can hold this thing off long enough for Kuya to get to safety. I have to try. I know how much he's relying on me. Rosemary, what are you going to do? What are we going to do? It's okay. Just stay behind me. What in the name of goodness are you two doing? It's been waiting long enough. <laughs> I can't even. Oh. As if the situation weren't bad enough. 
Caro comes wandering cluelessly out to find us, but stops short when she sees the Razorback. <gasps> we watch in horror as the Razorback, distracted by the sudden sound, charges at Caro. I just realized I'm covering both of them. Get over there. Caro! Kuya, claws barred and snarling, lunges towards the beast, but I stop him with a hand. Kuya, wait! I've got a plan. But you've got to get yourself to safety. Let me handle this myself, okay? Kuya hesitates a moment, then relents. He smiles and kisses me softly before hurrying away. There's no time, Kuya. It's not the time. While I make a noise to draw the Razorback's attention, Kuya sneaks through the trees towards Karo. I hope this works. The Razorback snorts and stamps at the snow. It lowers its head to charge. That's it. I sheathe my sword and wait. For this to work, I have to let the Razorback get real close. Here it comes. What? What happened? I remembered it all at once. The Razorback's strange secret weakness. Oh, what is it? Did you kill it instantly by stabbing the one weak spot or something? <laughs> Not even close. The Razorback isn't a naturally aggressive animal, unless you scare it or hurt it badly, like we did. Otherwise, it's pretty tame. The way you calm it down is by rubbing its ears, which are very sensitive and velvety soft, too. Of course, the problem is figuring out how to rub its ears when it's charging ready to rip you to shreds. I guess I got lucky. I shift my grip and rub the Razorback's ear tenderly between my thumb and forefinger. It shudders all over and lets out a hum of pleasure. If I didn't know any better, I'd say it was purring. Yeah, we're not gonna get any trouble from this cutie anymore. I blinded it. Isn't that funny? It seems so scary, but all it needed was a little love. Now it's a big ol' softy. Wow, it's like a metaphor or something. <laughs> what do you think? Should we call it Tusky? Wow, you outsiders are terrible at naming things. I find that I can lead the razor back wherever I want by tugging gently on its ears. Carl is pretty bruised up. The fall knocked her out cold. Thankfully, though, she's not hurt too badly. Together, we lift her unconscious body onto the Razorback and head off for Starlight City. Knowing Karo is going to be okay, Kuya relaxes. He puts his arms around my waist, resting his head on my shoulder. Now he doesn't have to be pretend to be rough anymore. To be rough and tough. The sun is just starting to set, and it's getting colder. But with Kuya leaning into me, I feel warm and safe. You know, Rosemary... There's an old moon forest fable that goes kind of like this. The great hunter goes to save his lady love from a fierce dragon, but instead of killing it, he ends up taming the dragon, so together they can fly home on its back. What I'm trying to say is, if I thought you might make a good hunter before, I know it now. You'd be the best of them all, I think. It's a very nice thing to say, but it makes me feel sad more than anything. It's Kuya who desperately wanted to be like the hunters, not me. When I came to Mount Needle, I wanted to prove something. I'd make it to Starlight City all by myself, maybe even slay some ferocious beasts along the way. I was tired of everyone thinking of me as a weakling. For some stupid reason, I thought this adventure could fix that. But when I met you, I realized something. There's no shame in being weaker than someone like you, Rosemary. I guess what I'm saying is, I don't mind being protected, if you're the one protecting me. That's when I realize that I don't want to say goodbye once this job is over. I want to stay by his side. I want to be his champion. I want to tie his hands behind his back again. It's been a strange and surprising journey, but against all odds, Prince Kuya has become precious to me. I lean in to kiss him. His arms tighten around my waist. Rosemary, I am royalty. I have the power to dub you a knight. From now on, will you be my knight? It would be my honor, Prince Kuya. Shortly before we arrive in Starlight City, I send the Razorback off into the woods. 
I'll miss that big old cutie pie. Carol wakes up shortly after. She's upbeat and energetic, if a bit sore. Soon we're in the city, which is just as beautiful and overwhelming as I imagined it would be. Dearest Rosemary, I must thank you. You risked life and limb to save us both. It's safe to say you've gone above and beyond what Kuya hired you to do. And once again, I can't apologize enough for my brother's behavior. Please don't cast all Moon Foresters in with his lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it's okay. I was happy to help you both. And Kuya already apologized to me, so, you know, it's all good. Kuya and I smile at each other and blush. Kara notices this and sighs heavily. Well, if this outstanding woman can find in her heart to forgive you, Kuya, I suppose I can too. Oh my god, that flip! You've made it this far. Would you like to join me at the council this year? As long as you're seen and not heard, of course. I don't know. I'm not sure what I want anymore. I think right now I'd just like to go home. I wouldn't mind showing Rosemary around Moon Forest, too. I mean, if you'd want to. Oh yeah, that'd be amazing. I'm sure it would be wonderful, but it's also quite impossible. Kuya, don't put any more foolish ideas into this poor girl's head. You know as well as I do that outsiders are not allowed to visit Moon Forest except in emergency circumstances. You being love-struck is hardly an emergency circumstance. What? But I'm a prince. That means I get to make the rules, right? I want Rosemary to come with me. You are a prince who is on thin ice, and you know it. Don't push your luck. An outsider visit to, um, an outsider visit is out of the question, and that's absolutely final. So, this is goodbye then? I hadn't been thinking about our future, but I guess I should have seen this coming. Moon Forest is completely isolated and secretive, after all. There's no way they would have let me just come waltzing in for no reason. If Rosemary can't come home with me, then I'm not coming home. What? What? Caro, you know that I'm not happy at home. No one at home is happy with me, either. Maybe the palace just isn't the right place for me. Rosemary travels all over the land, going on adventures and learning things. That's what I want to do, too. I... I know I'm not a great hunter. I never will be. But maybe I could at least try something new. And learn something, maybe. I can't do that at home. And it'd be worth it just to be with Rosemary. Besides, you know I'll be safe with her. You've seen how amazing she is. I know I'm weak, but... I'll be okay as long as I'm with her. You can trust Rosemary with my life, I promise. No pressure, <laughs> right? He looks at me with that big, hopeful smile. I smile back, but I'm trying not to get my hopes up. It all sounds too good to be true. To my surprise, Carl smiles at us too. You're more mature than I thought, Kuya. Rosemary. Would you swear on your honor to keep my brother safe in your travels and perhaps let him come home to visit once in a while? My heart leaps and for a moment I'm too excited to know what to say. Um, yes, yes, of course. I am sworn to protect Kuya on my honor as his knight. Very well then. Take good care of him. Kuya, you might find it hard to believe, but I will miss you. I'll miss you too, Caro. We say our goodbyes, and Caro leaves to attend the council alone. Now it's just me and Kuya, alone together. Free to make our own future. It's just you and me now. What should we do first? It's funny to hear you ask for my advice for once. Sorry, how's this? Lowly outsider, tell me what we should do now. Please. <laughs> Well, there's a lot we could do. I was thinking of traveling to the Western Islands next. Of course, before we go, I'd like to give you some sword fighting lessons. Um, that sounds great and all it does. But I was thinking that maybe we could just uh, take a break first. That 
That sounds perfect. I take his hand in mine, and together we walk through the city, ready for our next adventure. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> we did it! What did you think of the Barbarian storyline? For those of you who were really excited for Kuya, was it what you expected? <laughs> was it not? Did you prefer Tarun? Did you just love that I managed to put the game into the proper ratio aspect ratio this time? <laughs> Oh, uh, we um, we're definitely gonna come back to this. I need to do the dad stash guy, just a hundred percent. There is no way I'm not doing the dad stash. <laughs> She's so thirsty. I can't even. <laughs> it's amazing. Okay, Tisa, was it because it was less twilighty? <laughs> Adrian, no, it was not. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Mr. Schiffer has been summoning me for the last 10 or so minutes. So I will head off, let you enjoy your day, night, whatever. Don't forget, if you missed it, to check out my last video on going to cons for the Alternity um, Contest where you can win all the lipsticks. And I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.